Okay guys, so we are back in the sewing room again, and today we get to play with this really nice Singer 128 from I believe about 1936, uh, making it, uh, gosh, almost 90 years old at this point. And for the age, man, it is in really good shape. Uh, it's a really cool machine that uh, kind of for me represents kind of the transition age between old manual treadle machines and the electric machines of like the 40s and 50s. So it kind of looks like a mini treadle. It has like a, a treadle uh, hand wheel and it's got a shuttle bobbin, which means uh, it's, it's kind of old timey. Um, it's just a straight stitch machine. It doesn't have any, um, any bells and whistles. It, um, it's got a beautiful bentwood case. And it's, like I say, it's in just incredibly good condition, which uh, around here usually means if a machine is this nice and is this old and it looks this good, <laughs> there's probably something wrong with it. So that's kind of my job around here is when these come in is to try to figure out kind of like a puzzle, um, you know, what's it gonna take to get them running and um, try to figure out if there's anything wrong with them. And if there is, um, you know, fix them up. At minimum, we'll get this thing kind of torn apart and cleaned up and maintained and see if we can't get her back in service. So uh, before we get in and take a closer look, a couple really neat things about this. Look at this absolutely beautiful Bentwood case. It's the nicest one that we have and the nicest one I've ever come across. It has a working key uh, that, it, that works. The handle is an absolutely perfect shape. It feels really nice and strong. Now, I know you're not supposed to use these handles when you lift the machine because they're old and they're brittle. This machine luckily has kind of cut out coves under the base so you can lift it up and carry it around without using the handle. So that's a nice touch and probably one of the reasons why this handle looks as good as it does. Uh, inside of this Bentwood case there is a wire rack here uh, which I believe holds an original doodad box from Singer and also uh, holds the, the knee lever assembly, which I'm, I'm gonna need that, so why don't I just go ahead and pop that out. Look at that cool guy. That's like a, a doodad for all doodads right there, built in and everything. Uh, and so this machine doesn't have a foot pedal. It has this little hole right here, and you just plug this guy in, and it actuates the foot pedal, or the, uh, the uh, controller like that. Uh, super portable, super neat, and um, super old timey. So I haven't ever played with one like this. I've, I don't know anything about this machine. I don't have any history on it. Um, I'm trying to remember where we got it. I believe my wife brought it home from one of her Linus Foundation sew-alongs. I believe one of the ladies there uh, just didn't need it anymore or it had something wrong with it. I'm not exactly sure what the uh, details were on it, but in any case, we're very fortunate to have it. We love it when people give us machines that we give them a good home, we service them up and get them back in, into, uh, into action and uh, try to make stuff with them. And so we're really lucky to have it and I can't wait to dig into it. Now we can't go any further, of course, without doing a doodad check-in and look at all of the fun stuff that came with this machine. Awesome Singer box. Oh, we're dropping stuff. Sorry, buddy, did I get you? First off, it uh, looks like we do have a good functioning and not beat up um, power cable, so that will mean we have power, hopefully. Uh, I've got this really neat um, tin Singer oil canister, uh, oiler. I, I mean, how often do you see one of those? And it looks brand new. Really neat to have that. I've got two um, original Singer manuals, a 128 and a 127 uh, books. They're in incredibly good shape. Uh, I've got a, I've got some original Singer needle um, holders, and I've got an original doodad box just chuck full of feet and accessories and guides and all the fun stuff that you would want with um, with your machine that probably came with it originally. So really excited. The doodads are my favorite part, and so uh, we'll just stick these back over here out of the way, and um, that is our Singer 128. So let's get you in a little closer and we'll start looking around this thing for the first time together, figure out what it has and what it doesn't have and what it needs. And um, we will get this thing um, serviced and up and running. Okay, so the first thing I like to do when I get one of these machines home is I like to take the needle out and so I don't hurt myself. Let's get that out of here. And also I like to take out the bobbin so I don't get anything wound up that shouldn't be wound up before I get started. And this is a shuttle bobbin, so it looks like I just need to push this button. Yep, look at that, and it pops right up and gives me access. 
to this guy here. Um, I'm not sure if this is a long or a short, it looks like a, maybe a short version of the bobbin. And it's got some black thread in it. Okay, fairly stuck in there, but came out okay, looks all right. Uh, looks to be in good shape. I mean, there's not a lot of Mars or marking on it, looks pretty good. So that's, that's a good sign so far. Um, so, and these trap doors opened up and look good. Um, so while this is open, let's just take a look at this while this is off. This really reminds me of like a, an old treadle machine. It's got this hand wheel on it, but it really reminds me of our turn of the century treadles. Looks like it turns very freely. Man, it feels really smooth. Like it's not even dry. Unbelievable. Oh, it sounds just like one of our old treadles. Look at that. That is nice. Why is it spinning so freely? Oh, it doesn't have a belt. Okay, I was going to say there's no tension on this at all. Okay, so right away we're going to have to round up a belt. Okay, that's fine. Future knowledge. Okay, so this shuttle down in here seems to be moving back and forth quite nicely. Can't tell if it's in time or not, but I'm not seeing anything wrong with this assembly. This take up lever is moving up and down really nicely. Don't see any binding or bent pieces. Looks really good. Why look at the look at the decor on this. The flower um, design is just gorgeous. Really old timey looking. Okay, so that's cool. That's good. Uh, what else can we look at here? Does the clutch disengage? Oh, quite nicely, it does. And look at that, it stopped spinning. Re-engage the clutch and it works again. That that looks that feels like I've already serviced it. That is really quite amazing. Somebody took really good care of this thing for sure. It's got one of these old timey uh, bobbin assemblies on it. The rubber wheel is still quite soft and nice and pliable, so that that'll pass all day. So all we got to do, the uh, the bobbin st sticks inside of here, has a little guide. Let's see if it works. So all I got, I should just be able to just push this forward, and engage it. And it is, see the bobbin wheel is turning now. The tire, I guess you call it. Now let's see if as I turn it, this should go fall around this cam, this, this guide, and it should make this uh, thread guide go back and forth. And it's moving, let's see if it's gonna go back and forth all the way across. Look at that, see now it's going this way. And when it gets to the end, it should turn around and go back. Oh, this just sounds so smooth. Out there, yeah, here it comes. I'm gonna hit the low spot on the cam. It's coming back. Bob and Winder feels brand new. This is crazy. How awesome. Okay, there's not a lot of not a lot of bells and whistles here. It doesn't go forward and back. It doesn't zigzag. It doesn't buttonhole. It doesn't do anything except straight stitch. What I do have is a uh, stitch length adjustment knob, and a lot of times on these old machines, these are stuck. Let's see here if I can watch the feed dogs. And that looks like a, a pretty long stitch. It's using the whole guide hole. Uh, let's see if I can, and it's all the way tight. Oh, it's so, it's so smooth. I can't, it's not stuck or anything. Let's loosen it up a bunch and see. Oh yeah, it's only using half the, that's a very short stitch right there. I can go back again, tighten it. Yep, there's a full stitch. Wow, this is incredible. Uh, this works really nice. And look at the sheen. I haven't, I haven't even wiped it down. There's not an ounce of dust on it. I don't understand how this was stored and kept like this without being used. There is a little bit of pin rash, which I love. It means it was used at some point, but it has not had much. A few nicks here to kind of looks like it. You know, it was used at some point, 1930s. But there's no way this has been used all these years. This is just it's just too nice. Uh, the tension discs. Let's see if they're loose. Let's tighten it up. And then when I drop it, you can see it actuating it. So I think the rod inside is, is, is attached. So that feels like it's doing something. We do have a a little take-up spring. 
it sticks out pretty far. I'm not sure if that's how that's supposed to be, but it, it does have action, so that should be able to be worked. Okay, coming around. The, the foot does drop, and I, let's see. Wow, this is even loose. I can adjust the foot pressure with this knob. It's totally free. This is great. Coming around. Um, it does have a Singer light with a switch, and that feels like it engages. I don't know if this is the original light. It looks kind of modern, but I don't have any reason to believe this isn't the original. Um, it looks like it's in good shape, and there is a bulb, so we'll see if that works. Another beautiful uh, design on this uh, rear panel. I love the inlay or the embossing or whatever you would call that. It's really, really cool and it has like a really cool teardrop shape. The motor looks like it's in really nice shape. Um, we can check the brushes and the commutator to see if it's, if it's as nice as it looks, but looks pretty nice. Coming around here, um, what do we got? Oh, <laughs> found it. Okay. Uh, this is probably why this came to us the wiring the wiring is is shot i have exposed wires down here bare wires and i don't know if you guys can see this or not um <laughs> let me get a piece of tissue here this is a mess so what happens is these wires they get old and they the, the sheathing gets old and they they heat up and they melt the sheathing around uh, the wires and it turns to goo. Uh, look at this. Do you see that? That is a mess. I can see this is probably why this machine came to us because whoever had it didn't want to deal with it. Uh, it's, it's mildly dangerous. You've got exposed wires that are heating up. They can touch metal and, and send a shock to you. They can smoke. I'm sure that uh, the last time probably somebody used this it was, uh, you can, as the wires heat up, you can smell this stuff melting. It probably smells awful. Look at that. That'll get on your fabric. That'll get on your fingers. That'll get on your clothes. That is gnarly, gnarly stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> it's always something, guys. You gotta, you just gotta dig in and figure out what is going on. I mean, for this machine to be in this nice of shape, uh, there had to be something wrong with it. And there definitely is. I don't blame whoever it was that, um, who didn't who didn't want to deal with this if you guys run across the machine that's got um, bare wires and melted sheathing um, I would suggest fixing it right away don't try to sew with it even if it does work uh, you need to get this uh, safer uh, so we'll need to tear this down and get into the controller box and replace this short wire that goes from the controller to the the plug and so this is going to need to be all tore down. So that looks like that's <laughs> that's going to be our day today is going through uh, getting this wiring fixed. Um, but it'll be fun and uh, it'll be an adventure. I haven't torn into one of these before, so that'll be that'll be a lot of fun. Now, uh, like I said, you don't want to plug these in and play with them, but I do think that to get a baseline, um, I am going to plug it in and just see does the motor work? Do I have a light? Is the internal wiring good? You know, if it if it uh, sparks and shorts down or uh, you know trips the breaker, then I, I know I'm I can't do that. But um, by the time I tear this all down and put it all back together again, I'm gonna want to know if something doesn't work. It'd be nice to know if it didn't work before <laughs> before I tore it down. So let's just test this real quick. I'll get this. Uh, I will get this cable all unwound, and we'll just put power to it real quickly and see. You know, does it make noise? Does a controller? Have speed control on the knee, on the knee lever. Does does any of it work at all? Is it shot? You know, kind of before I spend all day tearing this thing down and servicing it, and we will find out what we're up against here. As soon as I can figure out how to unknot this. All right, let me plug this in over here. I have a surge protected um, plug in, so we'll keep us safe here. And then I just have the standard Singer plug. We will plug it in and hopefully no shocks happen. Okay, cool. We're good so far. Um, let's see here. Does the light work? Hey, light works, man. Oh, that's great. Switch is really strong and the light is turning on. I'm not getting any arcing right now. Uh, it probably... The, the wires will probably get hot eventually, so I don't want to play with it too long. But let's see. I'll find my knee lever here. 
the moment of truth here, I will plug in my knee lever and we'll see if it, if I can show this, if it's going to run. Yep. There's no belt, so it's not going to turn, but the motor's turning. You can hear it. That's full blast. Let's see if it has a control on it. I'll go slow. Oh yeah, look at that. It's slow. A little faster. A little faster. A little faster. And full blast. Oh, that that's great. That is just great. The wire melting sheathing is literally the only thing wrong with this machine. That is absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. Let me unplug this. And unplug this. And good. Man, that's great news. That is just perfect. Okay, cool. So I think we know what we're up against. Let's take a quick look underneath real quick. I'm gonna loosen this. Let's see what we've got going on under here. Let's turn this light on. Hopefully you guys can see under here. There's not much going on down there. It's super simple couple of oil spots it's not even dirty there's a few uh, dust bunnies and some extra needles sitting in here we'll get rid of that stuff but this is not even dirty guys look at it's just everything is so clean I don't I don't get it but I'm not arguing um, just need a little bit of oil in just to service it but it doesn't even act like it needs it it's just perfect it's just wonderful okay cool all right tighten that back down and that is the machine. We know what we're up against now. We will, um, I think what I'll go ahead and do is I will go ahead and go around and take off all of the covers and trap doors and get access to the controller. I'm gonna need to pull the machine out of the case of the base and get uh, access to all sides of it. I will need to pull the, the, the hand wheel and clutch assembly off to get it serviced and lubed. I will hit, get lubrication down all of the, you know, after I clean it, uh, I'll get lubrication in all the holes and all the moving parts. I'll pull the motor and the wiring uh, harness and I will get a new wire. It should just be a little short wire I need to connect from the connector, or the controller to the to the uh, machine itself. And then um, if, I, if I get that far, we, uh, we can, it doesn't seem like it needs it, but I can check out the bushings uh, or the brushes on the motor and the commutator and give this kind of a, a clean bill of health and uh, put it back together again and we'll see if she sews. So anyway, that is what we're up against. Um, we will get this thing torn apart and go to the next stage. Okay, so I am going to start taking stuff off of this thing so we can start getting uh, some uh, of the interior stuff cleaned and lubricated and, and worked out. And then eventually I'll get this machine out of its base and access to the controller and the wiring. So we'll just quickly run through here and start pulling stuff off.
it's not even tight. On most machines, this is how you adjust the belt tension. We'll see if this actually has some kind of a slot in it. And the motor's completely loose now. Yeah, I see the slot. If you can make that out, the slot in this will give you up and down a little bit to give you a little bit of more ability to tension your motor. Oh, wow. Oh, guys, look at this. This is, this is the dangerous stuff right here. This, <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this crumbling apart. It's just crumbling. This is all bare wire. These two wires get close to each other in arc, and that's how you get in trouble. These are the wires, oh, look at this black crud. My fingers are totally black now. This, this is the wires going up to the light, and the other wires are the ones between the controller and here. They're all gonna have to be replaced. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to get into the light uh, as well. That's gonna be fun, I haven't done that one. Okay, the motor looks really good. Uh, the rest of this is not looking the best. So be careful what I touch at this point because it is just a mess. Okay. Uh, let's see, I'm going to need to clean up and then I'm going to need to get wires pulled from the harness, the light, and the controller. I need to get the machine out of here. So uh, let me clean up and get uh, organized with the right tools and get set up properly. And then I will be back to that. Okay, guys, I got most of the uh, melted rubber off my hands. Uh, what I've got here is just basically a, a gnarly mess. Um, all I've done so far is to, I took off the, uh, the screw for this trap door so it's loose for the controller, and I took the mounting bolt off of the motor so that it's free. It was here, now it's here. And now what I need to do now is take this uh, light fixture off, and it's just got a single screw right here that should get it off. And then we'll, we'll go to the next step. Okay, that's the screw for the light. Now, everything that is melted and needing replaced is all right here. The wiring from the light switch to the power plug is dead. The wiring from the motor to the power plug is dead. The wiring from the controller to the power plug is dead. So I'm gonna have to pull all these components apart, pull the wiring out, uh, get it all disconnected, and then put new wires into each one of those. Uh, but I can't do that until I get the final piece of the puzzle out, which is this controller. It's mounted and hard in there, so it means it's gotta have screws from the bottom. So I need to tip this thing over to get access to those screws. But I've got a big mess here, and this um, that task is gonna be a lot easier if I don't have the machine in here flopping around. So I think the next thing I wanna do is try to get this machine pulled out of its base and try to contain some of this mess that I've got here. It doesn't get all over the carpet and whatnot. I've had, I've had a, a couple machines with some melted wiring before, but never to this extent, um, never every every wire on it being bad. <laughs> so first for everything, right? Um, oh, it's just it's just a mess. It's just disintegrated and melted. Okay, but by the time this is finished, it will be all fixed and up and running. So what I want to do is flip this guy around here and get access to the mounting screws. Okay, so let me get a screwdriver ready. Should be a couple flat heads is all it should take to get this off. Notice I've put cardboard down on my nice table. That's a, a must when you're doing this because as you can see, well, you just never know what you're gonna get into, but sometimes it's bad. 
Let me get all of these dust bunnies and needles out of here and straight into the garbage. We don't need those in the carpet. I step on enough needles as it is around here. Any more hiding? A little bit of debris. Okay, while we're here, we'll look at the hinge pins. They look just wonderful. That's great. Okay, so now let's see what we can do with this. Let's tilt this upside down. You see this controller is stuck steadfast into there. So what we need to do is try to get it loosened. Oh yeah, see this? We've got we've got screws here. Okay. loosened up that hinge screw enough to get this thing free and just slipped into this thing and kind of held me in place and this is what I'm left with see I was unscrewing this guy here I'll go ahead and screw that back in a little bit just so I don't lose anything I had a bunch of threads under it take that apart fix that okay so that is what we're dealing with here and the knee lever when it turns it just actuates this and makes it work so okay I can now put this aside and what I'm left with here is what I was shooting for I now have all of my components that need rewired all kind of here ready to be played with. Get this over here. I've got the the control. I've got the plug in here. Here, everything comes into here where you plug into them for the wall, and all the connections are right under here. Okay, so I've just got to get it taken apart, and I've got to take the, con the controller apart this plug apart, the motor apart, and this light fixture apart, and um, get access to all of the screws. So um, I'm gonna take a few minutes and figure out how to do all that, and possibly get into all those, and then I will uh, get back with you, and we will see how we do. Okay, so uh, now that I've got everything all uh, disassembled from the machine and the, the base, this is what I'm left with. I've got uh, three components, the controller, the motor, and the light, and then the uh, power junction uh, plug-in. So um, basically, um, you know, if you're a, a, a faint of heart on this kind of work, you might want to skip ahead to the next section where hopefully we have it back together again and running. But uh, if you do enjoy this kind of uh, this stuff, this will be a, a lesson in adventure and uh, in surgery in getting this all figured out and, um, and rewired. So um, first thing I need to do is figure out what wires go to what before I cut or dis uh, disconnect anything. You can see the wires are just completely um, obliterated. Uh, there's just raw wire sticking out everywhere. And so uh, we, need to, we need to fix that by replacing all the wires. Uh, now, so my, my game plan here is to uh, disconnect the plug so we can get to the back side of it and see what posts are what. 
uh, and then and then one at a time break into each of these components so we can see what wire hooks up to what post and which ones com correspond to the plug over here so that we know which ones to rewire the new wires to. Now I have uh, downloaded and printed this wiring diagram from the internet which clearly shows the three posts on the back of the plug and it's pretty simple basically the light fixture goes to the two outer posts the the controller goes to two the, the one side in the middle and the motor goes to the other side in the middle and that's how they kind of all talk to each other so um, with that said i think what we're going to do is go ahead and get started just start disassembling this stuff and see what kind of trouble we can get into so the first thing i want to do is get this um, plug uh, taken off of the motor and i should be able to do that like this okay perfect save that that disconnects the plug mount from the motor okay and now you can see the back side of this what i've got here to play with is a better shot of this these three these three posts okay left right and middle just like the diagram suggests the light fixture here it goes to the, the inner or the outer both outers the controller goes to the two left ones and the motor hooks up to the two right ones so um, there is a i think on the on the diagram this is yellow on the left and if you can see what's left of it this has a yellow sheathing on it also the one from the light fixture has what's left <laughs> of it is yellow sheathing here as well so I just want to make sure that I've got both yellows going to this left post when I'm done. And so I need to break into the light fixture and the controller and find out which post goes yellow, mark that and get it labeled so that I know which one goes to the yellow. The other one, we know where they go because of the diagram. Same thing with the, the controller and the motor. I just need to figure out one post of each, mark it somehow, label it, write it down, and then I'll know where the other one goes because of the, of the diagram. So um, that is the back side of the post or of the uh, plugin. Um, so let's start breaking into these components and see if we can't figure out what exactly is going on. Now the first one here is going to be the light fixture. Um, this is what held it onto the machine and it's got a little peg right there to hold it steady. And I see a set screw right here. So what I'm going to do is take a very small screwdriver and I'm going to attempt to get this set screw out. I may not need to take it all the way out. I need it to rotate. And it does. Okay, perfect. So I won't lose that teeny tiny screw. And you can see that the head of this light fixture is coming off. Okay, and I've got two wires going in. Pull some of the debris out of here so you can see it. I've got a felt, another a rubber, and a felt. My mounter post, another felt. A little threading washer. A little insulator post. Okay, these kind of all need to be, they need to all go back in the same order for sure. So I'll need to keep track of that. And you can see I've got two wires going in. One's yellow and one is not yellow. So we need to get in further to see where they hook up. I've got, looks like three set screws here. Let me carefully remove these. teeny screw two little teeny screws three little teeny screws 
Let's set these over here so I don't lose them. Okay. Now, by my estimation, I should be able to get in to this light assembly now. Oh, look at that, it slides right off. Okay, perfect. Very good. Okay, look at that. Just like that, we have access. Look at this junk just falling out of here. Oh, it's awful. Okay, I have a post on this side, and I have a post on this side. Okay, now, see this one here is yellow? This one here is not. So, when I hit this switch, what happens here? This, this pole throws and connects these two right here. These two, these two poles, okay? And so the yellow one looks like the neutral, basically. It's over here, not interacting with the switch. The switch side is the black side. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write down on here under um, light. Hello? Light, I've got yellow is neutral and black is the switch. Okay, so that is my markings for the light fixture. That will tell me what needs to happen going forward with the light fixture. Okay, so this is going to go over to the yellow, which is going to be this left post. The other one goes to the other side. That's pretty easy. So once I get all three components done just like this, I'll be able to snip everything out, get all the old stuff out, get it cleaned up, and roll. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this controller. Okay, the controller, if it's like a foot pedal, which it should be, there should be screws on the bottom of it. Okay, and there are. So let me take and see if I can get those off. Okay, there's one. There's two. And does that get us in? Okay, look at that, it's working. Okay, get this filthy cover out of the way. Okay, look at that. What we've got here, it's laid out of the way. Oh, these, <laughs> these wires are so dirty, I can't wait to get them out of here so I can stop getting black. Okay, so what we've got here are two wires, and they, this is the light, and they just go to the outer and the inner on the left side, okay? Um, and they're not marked, so I don't think it's going to matter which color is which. Okay, so we just need to know that, and I'm looking at my diagram, and the controller does share the left side with the light, so, with the yellow. So, what we're going to do is, actually I can just leave that alone, I'm going to disconnect this holder, and these will come right out, and then I just need to get new wires put on here. That's that. Okay, I don't think I need to mark anything. I could probably figure out which one is which um, with a voltmeter. I can do that, no problem. Let's now take a look at the motor. The motor needs to be the other two. Let's figure out how to get into this motor. And that should be, I need to get it separated. How is this motor put together? Okay, I'm seeing kind of a cap right here. So I'm wondering if I just unscrew this, if I can get into this motor.
Okay, <laughs> things have taken a crazy turn, right? Um, I finally figured out how to get the motor apart, and um, the determination I've come to is that the reason I had a hard time getting into this thing and getting to, uh, to the wires and to the posts is that this is maybe it's a little earlier model than other electric, motor, electric motors I've dealt with. All the other motors I've taken apart and worked on, you could get to two posts where you could take the wires apart with screws and get them out and just like the controllers or the light fixture and get them back in and put new wires in and be good. This was not like that. I finally got this apart, got the motor pulled out, uh, the, the commutator pulled out, and the wires are all the way at the other end here where you can see they're actually soldered into the brushing, the brush um, connections. And this one, this side was only held on by a couple wires. It was basically on its way out. And so with very little pressure, I was able to pull and disconnect that solder joint. So it basically, I would consider this a non-serviceable motor. I think in, you know, 1935, they didn't really anticipate this going out. And if it did, you had to, you know, you want to call your singer guy and buy a new motor or send it to the factory and have it rebuilt it, um, at the factory. So what I think I've come to the determination is that the wires that are coming out uh, at the at the plug, they're not in that bad of shape. Not like the other, the light plug, the light fixture and the, uh, the controller. They're not that bad. I can just rewrap them and, and reroute them and I should be good to go. So I'm going to take those off and I've marked which one goes to the center and which one goes to the right. So I can do that. I'm going to attempt to strip this wire back on the other end of this motor and attempt to re-solder it into, hopefully you can see that, re-solder it into the brush joint so that this will work again. And then I can put it all back together again and I'll clean up the commutator um, while I'm at it and um, get it all back together again and get it to work again. So that's my goal there. Um, it's, it's not what I expected. Um, none of this is, but that's the fun of this is it's just a big puzzle. It's just that this puzzle, <laughs> this puzzle got a lot crazier and um, and took some turns there I didn't expect. But that's kind of what I like. I like I like a challenge, and this definitely has become a bit of a challenge. So um, I'm up for it. We will work it out. Now, on the other uh, front, as you might, as I mentioned earlier, I want to I want to uh, mark which one of these two wires on this controller goes to the yellow or number one post on my plug, and I can do that with my ohm meter. And so, get this thing where I can play with it. Here, my controller wires coming in are these two. Uh, let me disconnect all this so I can see it better. Okay, it's coming in as these two right here. Okay, so what I can do here, is I can test it with my ohm meter. So if you just take your ohm meter and you put it on ohms, where you can do a continuity test and then test it when you touch the lead, leads together, I get continuity. And then I can go over to here on this on this controller and test which wire that gives me continuity. As long as these aren't touching, that does not. This gives me continuity and this does not. So I've marked which one, based on being able to tell which one goes where, I've marked which one of these goes to the number one post on the plug. And so now I know where everything goes. Um, so now I can go ahead and just cut out the bad wiring and um, get all new wires put in here, get this motor resoldered, and then put the puzzle back together again and put it together and hope that it works. So it's going to take me the rest of the evening to um, to get this motor disassembled all the way, get it all cleaned up and get the solder put back, uh, put the water resoldered and then um, and get new wires ran to the controller and to the light fixture. So I will get all that done and then um, I will join back up with you and hopefully it all worked out and we will get to move on to the next step.